All right, I would like to welcome a special guest to Poker News, a man at the final table of the World Series of Poker main event, one Upeshka de Silva. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me, and uh, how's it feel to be at uh, this, yet another WSOP final table, but this one being the main event? Uh, it, it feels great, uh, you know? I mean, I know it's kind of a weird rendition of the main event, but it's still cool to, to be there at the 10K freeze final table. So, yeah. yeah I, I say you, uh, you're coming in as one of the shorter stacks, the second shorter stack out of the final nine players. Um, you've got just over 2.1 million. The chip leader has 13 million. And then there's a bunch just kind of grouped up in the middle. Now, a lot of these players don't have the experience that you do, though. So, so all that taken into account, how are you feeling about your chances? Um, you know, I feel, I feel really good about my chances. I think I have something like 5% of the chips or something like this. Uh, so I know... Like, I know realistically, I'm a long shot to win. Kind of know how poker works, you know. But I do think that if I get a uh, a double up uh, kind of early on, I have a really good chance. And then I'm like, you know, I'll be in the two to five range. And I think I'll have a really good chance considering my experience edge. As a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner, you are the star of this final table, if you will. You know, you have the best resume of the remaining nine players that said are you familiar with any of the competition at all um actually i was so i know the the players that finished like 10th 11th 12th 13th 14th i was like really familiar with all of them right um but coming to this final table i'm only familiar with the players that for the most part that i played with them in this tournament um maybe if i like i mean i could look at their handed mobs and kind of get a better feel maybe but uh, for the most part it's just what we played in the main event and when you played the main event, uh, the early days were on online. Are you uh, in Vegas or where were you playing from? Uh, yeah, I was in Vegas. And now it's kind of an interesting thing, given what's going on in the world. You know, this is the hybrid format. It was played online and live. And now it's switching to the live portion. And of course, there are the, all these risks during a pandemic of COVID. Because if any of the players test positive, for COVID, they won't get the opportunity to play. They won't get the shot at the big money. And so we mentioned off air, uh, you know, are you quarantining between now and in the final table? Uh, yeah. So since I made the final table, I basically uh, haven't left the house. I've been, uh, what is it, day seven now? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've just been trying to take it easy, just like order in food or whatever. And uh, it's, so I'm at the final table of the LAPC. Uh, WPT tournament that's been uh, delayed and similar situation where if you get COVID you kind of get disqualified however the WPT gave us the option of making an agreement amongst ourselves and we kind of came to the agreement that if somebody does test positive we'll pay them out ICM at least for the WPT final table which seemed like fair because you can't really control getting it you know you can get it traveling to the casino from wherever you are sure uh, so, as, uh, I mean, I haven't really talked to the WSOP yet about if they're going to give us this option. They haven't really mentioned this yet, but it would be cool. Uh, it would be nice. Um, I think it is kind of unfair on the players because, like I said, you know, you can get it so easily uh, and to put in all this work. I, I get it from their perspective that it's tough to manage something like this. How else are you going to be able to run it? So uh, I'm not sure what to say, but yeah, hopefully we can come to an agreement. Well, and in terms of that WPT final table that you just mentioned, um, I'm, I'm not too familiar is that slated to play out here soon as well so we were scheduled to play december 4th um uh, but then i think poker go had decided that they didn't want to have any more like televised games or something like this so then wpt wasn't able to do it and so they had to reschedule i think for maybe march is what they're aiming for but there's no definitive uh, date yet sure um but i guess the wsp can have it because espn's doing it maybe or i'm not sure who's who's broadcasting it sure well, uh, you know, it's been a crazy year. 2020 is coming to an end. What's it been like for you? Have you just been um, not playing a lot of poker? Have you found other ways to play poker? What's it been like uh, for you as a poker pro in this, this crazy, unprecedented year? Um, it's, it has definitely been crazy. Uh, I started off the year doing really well live. And then my final table was originally April 1st, but that got canceled. And then since then, uh, I'm sure you've you're aware that online games kind of boomed during COVID. Everybody was at home. So myself included, I, I think I've played more poker this year than I have since like my first year playing. And uh, it's just because there were so many online games. And for the first half of the year, I was kind of a big downer, but uh, I was able to rebound in this last half. And uh, I feel like I got better and learned a lot uh, 
because Pope has changed a lot, obviously, in 2020. And so, yeah, it's been kind of a crazy journey to end up here now at the main event final. Yeah, it's certainly the whole main event taking place was a little shocking to many of us. The WSOP found a way to do it. Now, you're competing for your fourth bracelet. Your first one was 2015 No Limit Hold'em 1500 event. Then you 2017, you got a $3,000 No Limit Hold'em shootout title. And then in 2019 was a WSOP.com online knockout bounty bracelet. If you were to go on to win this, uh, this tournament, let's say you win this final table and you go on to beat Damian Salas uh, heads up in the finale for the extra 1 million in the bracelet, where would you rank this bracelet compared to your other three? Um, this bracelet, I mean, definitely would be the coolest, of, let, let alone, you know, most amount of money. So that's, that's cool. And then also I have a bone to pick with Damian Salas. He's really gotten the better of me in the last couple of big tournaments we played. And uh, <laughs> I've really been wanting to get him for some time. So, uh, yeah, it would be really, really cool to, to get this brace. It'd definitely be the first one by far, most important one. It would uh, certainly be interesting to see you guys go heads up. As I mentioned, you're kind of, the, you know, the, the, the player at the final table, the poker fans are most familiar with based upon your, your poker resume. So I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who would also like to see you battling out. But, uh, you know, like we said at the beginning of this interview, you have your work cut out for yourself uh, you know, as the second shortest stack, I want to touch real quick about your journey to the final table. Um, you mentioned that a lot of big name players fell, um, you know, pretty much from, I don't know what it was, 20th down to nine, a bunch of big names fell by the wayside. You were still there, but you know, what was the journey like? Did you struggle throughout the stretches? Did you just go card dead? Uh, can you give the listeners and viewers a little bit uh, uh, of an overview of your journey? Sure. Uh, so you, I believe you start with 60K in the tournament. And then after the end of day one, I ended with like crazy stack, like 1.9 million, like 33 starting stacks. So obviously, in a, you know, really well positioned for day two. And day two, the first level, uh, they had to go three times. So the first level was like 90 minutes. And like, you know, well over 100 blinds for most, for most of day two. Um, but I went kind of card dead, but fortunately the structure was really good. So I was able to just like stay around my stack. I didn't have any too big or too small pots there. Um, and then final two tables was the first time I was all in when I had Kings against ace Jack all in pre and I won that. And that was, I think the only time I was all in for the, for the most part, but by then the structure caught up final two tables and, you know, everybody's playing like between 10 and 30, 40 bigs or whatever. So um, I was happy to make it. I was, I mean, uh, the guy who got 10th, Anthony Spillan, is a good friend of mine. To see him get 10th, it would have been really cool to make a final table with a good friend like that. But uh, he's got, we got to swap in. So I'm sure he's rooting for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I re actually remember now from the updates, you finished as the day one chip leader with 71 players remaining. It's always one of those things we uh, keep an eye out for. How does the day one chip leader do? Um, and here you are at the final table with the chance to kind of, close it out, uh, which we don't see often from the day one chip leaders. Um, and between now and then, it's about a week before, it's exactly one week before this final table plays out. I know you're going to quarantine still between now and then, but are you going to be doing anything else, uh, anything else planned to get yourself ready for this final table? Any studying, any relaxation planned? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'm sure I'll do a bit, a uh, bit of study. And um, fortunately, because I had that uh, WPT final table where I'm the, I'm in la I'm the short stack there as well. I've been kind of studying for the situation for like most of the year basically already. So I'm kind of a bit prepared to be honest. Um, I do feel uh, uh, there's probably a little bit more work to do, but I think most important I want to just go in with like a really Zen state of mind, you know, Bryn Kenny kind of way, like just <laughs> just, just feel really Zen. And uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to you know maybe meditate, exercise a bit this week, eat, eat good. Um, and yeah, um, I have to spend this first Christmas away from my mom now. I think this is the first one. But, you know, she has 1%, so I think she, she's okay with it. <laughs> and uh, that, that's great. And before I let you go, your online screen name on WSOP.com when you're playing is Gomez Hamburg. Is there any story behind uh, why that's your screen name? Yeah, I, uh, so Gomez's Hamburger is actually a constellation in this, in the gap, like far, far away. It's one of the furthest known co constellations. It's two planetary disks that look like a hamburger. It's called Gomez's Hamburger. So, but Gomez's Hamburger didn't fit, so I'm Gomez Hamburger. <laughs>
<laughs> there we go. Are you, uh, you know, like a, um, uh, an astro uh, astronomy aficionado or like what's the, what's the uh, draw to that? Well, I mean, I'm, I, just, I just thought it was kind of hilarious that there's a constellation named Gomez Hamburger, you know? Uh, and yeah, anybody from, uh, that has Asian parents is going to be a bit astrological. Can't, there's no, uh, no way around that. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not too superstitious, but you know, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's run good so far, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, I certainly hope it uh, will carry you through here at the main event final table. I wish you luck there. And if anybody wants to keep on tap, uh, on top of De Silva's run in the poker world, follow him on Twitter at Padawan Pesh. That's P-A-D-A-W-A-N-P-E-S-H. Uh, Peshka, thank you for taking the time and good luck, man. Hey, thanks, Chad. Appreciate it.